So today is Tuesday the 19th of September and I've now completed the Chateau Trace Trail all 323 miles and I had such a drastic change in equipment compared to last year that I felt that I needed to do another um, equipment review and you have to excuse me that my cat is chasing a mouse up and down this tree and it's, I'm having a really hard time. Alright, so I'm going to do this a little differently than most people. Um, I'm already done hiking the trail. I'm going to break this down into basically three systems. What I wore, what's in my pack, and how I did First things trip. first. These Altera Lone Peak 3's absolutely rock. I had always been a Brooks Cascadia guy. Um, as you know, if you've watched the Chateau Trace videos up till now, I had extreme problems with blisters on my feet. Um, I don't want to say that it was the shoes, but I was just looking for a different solution. And so many hikers recommend these Altera Lone Peak 3s that I bought a pair. Now, when I bought them and I first put them on, the very first thing I noticed was how squishy... The rubber was like when you stand up you would feel like they were just wobbling they're so cushioning um, and I was a little concerned about that but I wore them for a couple days before I went out on the hike to get them broke in and the more I wore them the more comfortable they were the easier they were to stand in um, these absolutely rocked on the trail I had zero blisters now, I don't know if that's because of the shoes or because of the socks, which was also totally different and I'm about to get into. So, Altero Lone Peak 3s. Ultra Lone Peak 3s, I'm sorry. The next thing were socks. These socks, so out of 14 days, it rained 6 or 7 days. And I'm, I'm talking like rain the better part of a day. And then... You take the days it took to dry out. So probably 9 out of 14 days, my shoes and socks were soaking wet. I could literally wring the water out of these. And it's been Tuesday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It's been three days since I come off the trail. And these are still wet, these socks. Um, these are the Njinji toe socks. They got like little places where you put your toe and Njinji. They're common with runners. These are what they call mid-weight hiker. Uh, they go just slightly above your calf. And then I paired those with Njinji liner socks. These are much thinner than the, the hiker socks. Um, the liner socks basically keep friction points from rubbing on your feet, which causes blisters. Absolutely work. Even though... Eight or nine days out of 14, my feet were totally soaked, zero blisters. It has to be because of these shoes and socks combination. Totally worked. Absolutely ecstatic with these. I also used the same brand of shoes, Gators. Um, the Gators work great for keeping crud out of your shoes, rocks, sticks, sand, that sort of thing. Um, and anytime you get one of those things in your shoe, that creates a friction point where you can get a blister. So this is the first time I've ever hiked with gaiters. I will never, ever, ever hike again without using gaiters. It's absolutely a must. Um, I do remember the first 10 days using the Brooks Cascadias and no gaiters. I was constantly stopping two, three, four times a day just to get the rocks out of my shoes. So, um, absolutely love these. The next thing, I've used this for years. Um, this is called a cool cap. It looks like a bandana. And when you put it on, it looks like a bandana too that's already been tied. But inside this, in the brim and also in the head, are those... Uh, it it kind of looks like those things that you put in a freezer. Those gel packs you put in a freezer and then you stick in a lunch box to keep your lunch cool. So it has that built into the brim and the head of it. And the way that this works is, 
on a really hot day, if you get this wet, either from sweat or a stream, you have heat transfer from your head into those gels and it keeps you cooler when it's hot outside. And these things actually work. Um, you get them from, you can get them from Walmart. They're like seven or eight bucks. If you get it off of Amazon, they're listed there for like $20. So sometimes they're listed as a cool cap. Sometimes they're listed as a dry cap. And Walmart, you can get them back in the sporting goods department. Absolutely worth the money. These work great. Not only that, keeps the sweat out of your eyes because it's constantly soaking the sweat up from your head. Absolutely a must. Um, for shorts, I did the Nike Dry Fit running shorts. I think these are the 7 inch. I know they're the 7 inch. Um, so these are the Nike 7 inch Dry Fit running shorts. I did not cut the liner out of them. The liner is still in them. The reason being is because I did not wear boxers at all. I noticed a lot of hikers that were using these were cutting the liners out and then using like ex officio boxers. I was like, why would they do that? It's got a liner in it that's going to wick away the sweat. Why would they cut that out and then wear ex officios, which weigh a lot more than the liner in this? So I thought I would just try it without cutting the liner out and not wearing boxers. And it absolutely worked wonderful. I did not have hardly any chafing. Um, there was one or two days that I had to put some body glide on. Uh, guys know where. Um, but it wasn't every day, and when you look at the fact and consider that there was so much rain and humidity, I'm really surprised that there wasn't more chafing. But these worked wonderful. They're super light, absolutely a must. They're going to be, basically everything you see right here is what I'm going to be wearing now, spring, summer, and fall, and then I'll have to change it up for late fall, winter, early spring, but this will be it. The next thing I did the, and I'm not sure the pronunciation on this, someone will correct me, I know somebody will, because that's just the way people are. The Arcteryx, um, I can't remember which version this is now. This shirt was absolutely wonderful also. Um, let me go back to the, the shirt and the pants. So all the times it rained, I used an umbrella or I used uh, a wind jacket that has DNF coating on it. And even if I got these wet, within 30 minutes or so of the rain stopping, they would be totally dry just from body heat because the material is so thin in both of these and they're so light, they would just dry and... It was awesome because there was so much water and I was constantly getting wet. Um, actually, going back to the shoes and the socks, they were the same way. Even when the shoes and socks got wet, if it would stop raining and I was walking like, because I had to do a lot of asphalt road miles, say I had to walk four or five miles on a hot asphalt road, the shoes and socks would dry out easily. The reason why they're not dry now is because on my last day, I said, it's my last day, I'd really like to have dry feet for once, and I actually wore the socks that I sleep in to the trailhead. And I stuck these inside of a Ziploc bag where they remained from Saturday until I just started to do this video on Tuesday. And there was no way for the moisture to go, so they're still wet. So that's what I wore. Uh, Again, I'll put a link to the gear so you can see the weights. That way you can go look it up yourself. I'll probably go ahead and link to the gear at Amazon if it's available in the description so you can buy these. I, I bought pretty much everything that I took on this trail from Amazon except for a few items, and that was mostly the Z-Packs and the Mont Bell stuff that I had to order straight from them. So that's what I wore. Works perfect.